have you come across um, a scenario whereby you assumed there was a um, a task humans were carrying out traditionally that bots could supersede them by and 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 take over the task, but then you got into the design of the actual bot logic and realized that human involvement was actually required to either improve the success of the task or because of unforeseen scenarios that may come about as, as a result of the task. Has that ever occurred or so far has it always been pretty straightforward that the bots can do what they expected, what they were um, expecting? Um, well, we had to revise uh, some workflows once in a while, but you, you, we, we tend to work around it by uh, starting uh, with a proof of concept and and uh, getting an, an engineer uh, with someone of, of the organization who wants a bot uh, to to e explain them what they want, not in the, the smallest detail. So there's a little bit more margin of error. Um, but uh, well, we, we so we do some some work in advance to get to get an idea if it's possible to robotize the process. Um, and yes, we have, uh, um, well, an example, if we have, um, at the end of the mortgage, you're just, you, you, you stop your mortgage, you say, I don't, eh, it's done, uh, my final payment. Um, we have to fill in some forms and uh, that goes, that payment goes to, in our case, a big list. Um, what the people in the back office will do, uh, typically, is they would do, uh, like, 20, 30 tasks uh, after each other in one day, everything in one single day. Um, and halfway that process, we bumped into something that our our mainframe or our, sorry, our mainframe, our uh, main uh, um, backend could not, had to wait a day. Uh, so what we did, we split up the, uh, the bots and we did something in day one. And then uh, we flag them in our database, like this is done on day one. And then uh, we made a, a, a separate string of robots, which started on day two, using the same database with what we started with, where we had all the information in, and we picked only the ones that said, yeah, day one is finished. Um, and we started at the day two. So actually, we mm -hmm. split the process, which they were doing in one day. But since we were doing it in two days, and our uh, the, the service level agreement was uh, I think eight days. We were still on time, so uh, we we did it in uh, we we stretched the process a little bit, but to our benefit mm -hmm. to get to get the the end result as much as we uh, we wanted uh, by not using the 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 back office people to to do the process. Hmm. So wow. yeah, and sometimes you you uh, you bump into those kind of things. Um, and and main mostly there is there is a there is a way around it. It just it just comes down to how fixed are you to your process, uh, how fixed are you not making your bot too complicated? Because these kind of things, uh, a, a little bit of a, a exemption here, a little bit of exemption there, make your robot very difficult to maintain in the long run. So you you basically want them as as easy as possible. Um, and then you typically don't want those kind of, you know, branching all kind of stuff uh, uh, to 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 make your your, your bot uh, difficult. Mm. So Maybe is it I better can... to have. Sorry, Kevin. Just one quick follow up question, yeah. Baron. Is it better if you have a body of complex logic that relates to one task you were expecting a robot to perform, um, but you look at the logic after you you map it out and you see that that's a lot of branches a lot of conditional logic a lot of um a lot of different directions it can go into is, is it a best practice then to perhaps split that into two or three microbots that each we, carry out individual tasks but are more easily orchestrated and managed yeah we do we do um uh to to um prevent uh, technical debt we we revise robots um 
well, not regularly, but we do look into that. And yes, uh, we we uh, after a while you you uh, you see that that uh, the solution you came up with is is not or is not up to the standards which we're we're evolving, um, or it's just you know um, impossible to understand for uh, the 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 one person who made it usually can read the robot, but we want robots which are maintainable by the by our whole team. So actually, everyone should be interchangeable. And by by reading, we we try to make bots which are at, we have little steps uh, in our flow, logical steps uh, on a uh, end user kind of level. We try to, um, and you want those to be readable. So if you if you see the steps behind each other, you you in, in one glance you should know what what's happening. And some robots mm. don't don't uh, don't do that anymore. And then after a while, you can wait for it to to go wrong, um, or you can make some some space and some time to to fix them uh, uh, preemptively. <laughs> Thank you, Baron. Sorry, Kevin. Go ahead, please. Well, um, Baron, maybe it's a good example uh, what we do with our customer due diligence uh, robot because that robot was running on device automation, and uh, you revise that with uh another lead uh engineer uh to make it all automated uh on on web-based uh google searches right yeah 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 we we had that yeah one of those robots was indeed uh, running on a on a separate machine and um well we looked we, we we that was the quickest fix we could do just replace the process we had with that machine and make a bot which was working on that machine but like mm. I said already before, it's it's very um, uh, uh, prone to errors. So um, after uh, well, we 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 got all those errors and we looked at them and like, yeah, is it is it is there a possibility to fix those errors in this bot, or do we have to to revisit the whole design and try to to make it better? Um, and in the end, we um, we looked at possibilities to uh, to to get calls which were not uh bound to a device um and and, and we fixed it to by by just making it a a web based uh, a bot and then um well most of the most most of the problems disappeared and to give you an idea thomas this this robot runs the whole day the whole mm -hmm. night yeah. uh so it's it's for our company uh, a very a large robot what what is running and it's it's a robot that is uh, far uh, far ahead from what it, what we are doing hmm. wow hi you you mentioned customer interaction i have you had enough um experience with the robots to see that their involvement in your business automation is not just to improve the efficiency, the cost effectiveness, to add optimizations on the back end, but has the use of RPA also resulted in any improvements in terms of customer experience? <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 that's always where your managers look for the first. It's if it's a, if it's an improvement in cost or if it's an improvement in labor. But actually, what what happens is that if you get some uh, labor freed up. They can focus on the stuff which is really important because what I, I started with, most of our bots are, u are used to read something from a screen from uh, application A and type exactly the same stuff into application B. That's boring. It's not fun. It's not what you're trained to do. It's just stupid work. So uh, if we take away all that work, you get, you get the work uh, where the people were trained to do. And they they get more satisfaction on and yes they they do it with sometimes with less people, but it's more uh, rewarding for them. So um, mm. do we have processes where you see that our customers are more um, uh, yeah actually yes um, they're more happy um, they're serviced quickly quicker. Um, if we get forms for a renewal of contracts, um, uh, we well we have this service level agreement of five days or eight days or typically that. Uh, with robots, we can turn it around into one or two days or even or even quicker. Or so, immediately, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah and and for our um uh, uh, how do you say that in English? Beslag. Um, uh, we freeze uh, sometimes. We have to freeze an account uh, so that uh, the people cannot uh, access the uh, the funds anymore. Um, that's very very time critical. And if you we have an hour process where a robot picks up. It's it's an in, an invoice which is coming electronically. Uh, the robot uh, signals uh, the new arrival of a. Uh, uh, of a case, it immediately starts uh, blocking um, uh, accounts. Um, so there is no uh, funds transferred to, well, God knows where, Cayman Islands or. Right, right. Cool. Hmm. Nice. So, I... so it's also for us, it, it, it has a benefit, but also, yeah, for customers, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that immediate fraud detection or any um, sort of processing that could. Pick, on, pick up on something that should not be occurring much faster than a human would be of great benefit. Yeah.